Hi, I'm Mike with House on the Mend. And in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the very sleek, lively 20 volt string trimmer utilizing the really innovative U20 battery platform. So let's get started. House on the Mend. Now I'm not paid nor sponsored by Lithely. They simply reached out and offered to send me this tool for my independent review, just like I did a few videos ago with their hedge trimmer. So let's unbox it and see what comes in the package. Once again, a box within a box. They don't mess around with shipping. All right, here's everything that comes in the excellent packaging. You have the tool itself uh, that is going to be secured with these two screws right here at this pivot point. Uh, it is not collapsible like this normally, that's just for shipping. Then you have the trimmer head guard right here and the adjustable handle. Uh, all the screws and everything for those are included right here. And then the unit comes with two two and a half amp hour battery. So a nice sized battery. Uh, if you turn it over and you look here, you can see that it's actually 46.25 watt hours, which for a 20 volt battery equates to just under two and a half amp hours, 2.3, so real close. Um, most batteries are a little bit under what uh, they claim to be. Now you might be asking, like I did, why are there two batteries? Well, I reached out to Lithely and this is not a 40 volt unit, so these are not in series, instead they are in parallel. Lithely says that uh, this is a 20 volt tool that is drawing from both batteries at the same time for extended battery life. So we're going to test that, we're going to test and see if you can get away with using one or if you have to use two for the tool to operate. And we'll also see how long the tool lasts on these two two and a half amp hour batteries. Now, I'll talk more about how awesome these batteries are in a little bit, but first I'm gonna take this one and take it away and go charge it so that uh, we get to cutting quicker. So I'll be right back and we'll assemble the tool. First thing I notice when I take the tool out is just how sleek this back area of the body is. You've got uh, several different colors of plastic. None of this is uh, stickers. And there's a nice rubber grip right here where your hand goes. I also love the fact that it is an ambidextrous safety. So right here on the thumb for a lefty, you push the thumb and you pull the trigger. And if you rotate it right over here to the other side and I switch hands, you can see the exact same button on the other side to uh, release the safety and actuate the trigger. I love that the tool is ambidextrous. Uh, up top here, you have a switch that is high and low. So high speed, low speed. Right in front of that is a nice uh, foam grip uh, to rest your hand on. And right in front of that will go the handle that we're gonna put on in just a moment. Uh, this button up top here at, towards the back is the battery release and I'll get a close-up of how to insert the batteries and how to release the batteries here when we go inside. Let's switch over to the trimmer head. So the first thing I notice uh, is that the head is very substantial. It appears to be made out of cast uh, aluminum. Um, has a good bit of weight to it. In fact, I have a uh, luggage scale here that I like to use for tools. We'll get an overall weight here with two batteries on it uh, in a moment, but just the head itself is coming in at 3.2 pounds. So a pretty robust head. Now, at the part of the trimmer head that rotates down here, you will see the green wire preloaded into it. This is uh, 0.085 inch so that is a uh, upper uh, end thickness which is really nice this should be very robust uh, string trimmer uh, cord that should last the uh, very bottom here uh, is the part of the head that you will impact the ground with and that will while the tool is spinning uh, release a short amount of the trimmer cord out to extend it. 
So that's really nice. That's pretty standard, though I have reviewed a tool before where you had to come down here and do it manually by hand. I like that you can just thump it on something flat and get some cord out. All right, let's extend this out and put it together. It's pretty simple. There's these two really nice, uh, like, Torx bit head screws that come with it, and it also comes with the included tool for tightening those down. There's one and two. Pretty easy. All right, let's put the handle on next since we're right here. Now the handle has a slight angle, and you want that angle going forward towards the trimmer head. So we'll put it in here. It clicks into place, pretty simple. Get it basically where you want it. Then it comes with a little nut. And then you take the bolt, you put it right through this little included plastic pivot head here. And just screw it to hand tight. Good. All right, let's draw back to here where we have the head in the screen. And you've got two holes right on this guard that correspond with two screw threaded screw holes right here. So let's just bring that around, put it right there into place. One screw, two screws, and we'll tighten them down again with the included Torx wrench that comes with it. Pretty easy. All right, right here is the a uh, cutting knife for the trimmer cord. It comes pre-installed, but it does have some packaging tape on it. Looks like just like a white colored masking tape. We want to take that off. It just peels right off easy. Uh, so that is going to cut the cord as it rotates around. You'll bump it a couple times as it extends out. It cuts to the perfect length right on this knife head. And those are the three easy steps to assembling it. Let's go inside and I'll show you how to charge the battery and some of the cool characteristics of the battery. All right, let's take a closer look at the Lithely U20 battery. So the first thing I notice when I look at these is just how sleek they are. They look like something out of the space program. And I love that it has a battery life indicator. As you can see here, we have two bars out of four, meaning we're at about 50% charge coming from the factory. Now, if we flip this over on its end, you can see there is a USB and a USB-C port. So not only is the battery a power tool supply battery from these two small ports here, but it also can charge your electronic devices either through USB-C or regular USB cable, which is just awesome. Now, the one thing I'll say about these batteries that I don't like is there is no way to see which battery is the two amp hour that I got with the hedge trimmers and which one is the two and a half amp hour battery that comes with the string trimmer. So the only way to tell is by looking at the very small writing down here and doing the math that this is 37 watt hours times 20 volts, get you close to two, and this is 46, getting you close to two and a half. So uh, unless you wanna have reading glasses on and do math, the best way I have found is just to take a labeler and pop a label on each one so you can distinguish amongst them. Now the battery does not come with a wall charger. It does come with this nice braided cable that is USB to USB-C, or you can pull the USB off here, and it's USB-C to C, which is really cool. I've, I've never seen that before. When it comes to charging, your standard uh, household wall charger here in America for a USB is anywhere from five, nine, or even 10 watts. But the Lithely 
battery can be charged at a maximum of 45 watts, which is huge. That's over four times. It's four and a half times as fast as this one here, which is my largest capacity. So I would do what I did and go on Amazon. I'll leave a link to this is a 45 watt charger. So let's put that in, clear this stuff out of the way. This 45 watt charger comes with its own really robust cable. So we're going to use that. I'll plug it in here, plug it into the USB-C port. And you can see we have two bars and the others are blinking, showing that we're at 50% charge. When we're fully charged, there'll be four solid lights on. Let's start our timer, take a reading of the temperature, 82 degrees Fahrenheit. So we'll check once it's fully charged to see if it's creating any alarming amount of heat. A quick comparison of the Lithely 2 amp hour battery next to three of its competitors, also 2 amp hour, shows that it's got a slightly larger perimeter. However, it's the thinnest of the four and the second lightest, weighing in at 14.2 ounces. All right, around 55 minutes to bring this battery up to fully charged. And it only raised the temperature just a couple of degrees. Not bad at all. So these notches that you see here uh, are for the battery engagement and release, which are on the inside of the tool. So you want those notches facing in on both sides. And then you simply click the batteries into place to release them press the button and they slide out under some pretty substantial spring tension. All right, I have the trimmer fully loaded with its two batteries and I've adjusted the handle forward a bit from where I originally put it so that as I hold the handle, the tool is perfectly balanced so that the trimmer head is basically parallel with the ground and that feels pretty comfortable. Now let's get a weight on it. So with uh, out the batteries, it is 6.6 .6 pounds, and fully loaded, it is 8.5 pounds. All right, let's start with the low setting and just listen to what it sounds like. That is really quiet. Here's high. You can hear it power up, but still really nice and quiet. Sure beats a two-stroke engine right here by your ears. And another thing I said I would check is, will it run with only one battery? So let's remove one. And the answer is, no, it won't. It has to have both batteries in. All right, with the equivalent of five amp hours of battery life, I'm not sure I'm gonna have enough weeds around the property to give it a thorough check. So we're gonna do a runtime test first and fully deplete these batteries. I'm gonna take this unit and as you see here, I'm gonna put it on a sawhorse in my garage so my neighbors don't have to listen to this thing whining for a while and let's see how long it runs. Still going after an hour and 22 minutes. We are down to one and a blinking one. So any minute now. So the final runtime turned out to be an hour and 28 minutes and that only caused a four degree rise in temperature for the batteries, which is pretty impressive. So I took the two fully depleted batteries inside and recharged them to their current fully charged state. The 45 watt charger took an hour and nine minutes and I stopped counting with the nine watt charger at three hours and 36 minutes when I went to bed. So sometime after that, it finally charged. So I would definitely recommend buying a 45 watt charger. All right, let's start out by the front of the house here. This is uh, alfalfa weeds that pop up, even though we don't have any actual uh, hay fields around us. I think it's from the hay I put down uh, each year as a mulch. And this is a very soft weed, so let's see how it does. First thing we're gonna need to do is extend the wire uh, while the unit is spinning and uh, we will knock off the excess. Let's see what that sounds like and how many times it takes me thumping it on the ground to make that happen. We're gonna do everything at high speed. All right, so three bumps, 
got us to to the point where we did trim off some excess so that's good all right here we go an irrigation line running across here that I don't want to nick so uh, I'll finish the rest of that after I move it but it made quick work of all this stuff right here in the dirt um, I did notice that the guard doesn't seem to be protecting my pants very much there's uh, quite a bit on my pants and shoes but it's doing a great job um, let's move on and do some more testing these little baby tumbleweeds are everywhere. Let's get them while they're small. Easy. This guy's right on the edge of our basketball court, so let's get him real quick, too. Well, we struggle to grow things in amended soil here, but the weeds, they'll just sprout up in recycled rubber playground mulch. <laughs> so frustrating. The maintenance couldn't be easier. You just wipe it down with a wet rag. Well, all that testing footage was heavily edited down so you didn't get bored and switch to a different video. And even so, we only dropped by one bar on each battery. So I think that's enough testing for me to give you my pros and cons. First, the pros. The build quality of this tool is just excellent. It feels really high quality. Everything is pretty robust on it. And uh, I love the balance of the tool. As, as long as you adjust the handle here to the right spot, it's really effortless. The uh, 0.085 string diameter is perfect. Uh, it's got a lot of power in it, but doesn't wear down really quickly like some of the smaller sizes. The um, power for the tool is great. It didn't bog down on even the tumbleweeds that we were cutting in the back portion of the property. The battery life for this tool was also excellent. An hour and 28 minutes of runtime with the two batteries is more than sufficient for even some of your professional landscapers, I would think. Now, granted that's not under load, meaning we weren't actually physically cutting weeds during that time, but I still think that that is more than enough and certainly better than some of the other tools I've tested. Lastly would be the battery platform. I think it is so cool that you don't have to put an attachment onto the battery uh, to get USB charging out of it. It's built right in. I've only other seen a few brands where they had some of their batteries that had that built in, whereas Lithely has them on all of their batteries. I love that you can charge it on USB-C anywhere, basically in the car, from an outlet. You don't have to have a specific cradle. And also there's a bunch of other tools coming out this year for this same battery platform. And if you check out the link below for Lithely's website, you'll see all kinds of other things that they have besides power tools to include power stations that can be charged with solar. It's really a neat company and I'm excited to check out their tools. Now the cons, and thankfully there's only one. This safety guard here, I believe is undersized. I would like to see it uh, a little wider on either side of it. There were several instances where uh, my sunglasses were hit, uh, my face, and certainly my pants and boots. And I think that could be taken care of by extending the uh, guard out a little bit more. 
So if you found this video helpful, will you please give it a thumbs up? It really helps the algorithms start suggesting it to more viewers. Also, please consider subscribing. I'm working really hard to put out good quality content and tool reviews. We've got a van build series going on that I think you would enjoy. It really helps the channel and it's free. You just log in to your account and click on subscribe or if you're on Rumble, follow. Now in the description below, I'm gonna leave a link to this tool. Full disclosure, that will be an Amazon affiliate link. So if you click on it and end up making a purchase, it won't cost you a thing but I do get a small reward at the end of the month and that's very helpful when you consider all the different camera angles and the time it takes to make these videos. I want to thank Lightly for once again sending me this tool for my independent review with no preconceived agreements on what I was going to say. I think it takes a lot of courage to do that and uh, they should have absolute confidence in this tool and this review video because it is excellent. Until next time, thank you for watching. Uh, weed, so I expect. All right, let's try all that again. Jeez, this is terrible. Let's just delete this one. <laughs>